started playing the bass when I was 10 years old, and I just fell in love with it immediately. I've never been bored with it. I've never wanted to play another instrument. I, I've, I've just, I've always been fascinated with all of the ways you can make the bass do things, and all the ways to strike the strings and rub the strings. And it's an incredible percussion instrument. Different parts of the body have very different sounds. Just finding ways to make the bass do things that it really shouldn't do. In 1977, I moved to Nashville, and after a few years of struggling, I was able to get a really great gig with a singer named Don Williams. Don was a great guy to work for. He kind of opened my mind up in terms of what I could do as a songwriter. Even though we were in the field of country music, Don gave me the feeling that I could do anything I wanted to do, and he was very supportive. All the time I was playing shows and concerts with him, I was kind of working on my own stuff. And Guy Clark, a great Texas songwriter who I'd worked with for more than a decade at that point, called me up one day in 1991 or two, somewhere around there, and said, hey, I've got a song you got to hear. And he played me a cassette, of course, of a song called The Day the Bass Players Took Over the World. The change was subtle and the mood was low key. The sky was overcast. Written you by Emily Cates, see, living in Austin, the Texas. All at the slid time. down to a slower frequency. The day the bass players took over the world. I they recorded a version of, of it with multiple bass parts and I sent it to Emily. And and she loved it and was kind enough to make me a co writer and a co publisher of my version of the song. You think it was planned. The day the bass players took over the world. About that time, there was a writer for Bass Player Magazine named Richard Johnston, who had heard my playing on some records with Trisha Yearwood and uh, Keith Whitley and some other records, as well as Don Williams. To be in Bass Player Magazine, even just in a review, was very exciting. And then Richard called me up, we got to know each other a little bit, and told me that uh, he would like to do a feature article on me for the magazine. And I thought, oh my God, that'd be great. And so we talked and did interviews, and, and of course I sent him the version of bass players with 22 parts and he liked it and he passed it on to Jim Roberts who was the editor of the magazine at the time. Jim and I kind of struck up a friendship and I was saying gee wouldn't it be fun if we could have an all bass orchestra show at Summer Nam? wouldn't that be great and, and he said yeah you know if I got you a little budget do you think you can put it together and he kind of called my bluff. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that but I couldn't say no so uh, I said sure let's do it. One guy put this event together did all the work, found the people, got the venue, organized the music, did the whole thing, and he's gonna run the show. I am very proud and happy to introduce to you Dave Pomeroy. So we had a show, the first one in 1994. Dwayne Eddy was a special guest, and I had about 16 or 17 of my good friends in Nashville who were self-indulgent, experimental-minded bass players like myself who were willing to come try something that had never really been done before. It was definitely a little loose, definitely a experiment in the making, but it, it went over really well and people seemed to really enjoy just the whole madness of it, and I certainly did. But I think the biggest thing that made it work was the location of everybody on the stage. Stage left, audience right, were the low bases. They would essentially play the lowest voicings, be sort of the, the foundation of it all. Next to them would be two guys playing fenders. You know, we call them the mid basses. And then in the back, we would have either three or four acoustic basses. The string bass players kind of become the drummers in a way. Moving over towards stage right, audience left, uh, we would have two Dan Electros, and they would kind of cover the sort of guitar parts, if you like. Then on the far left would be what we called the high basses, where we'd have guys that would maybe have six or seven or even nine string basses and would play up in that upper register. So there's kind of a shape to the setup on stage, and that really made it a lot easier to organize. Second year we did it, I got a little over ambitious, and we had about as many technical and other kinds of glitches as you could ever imagine, but we all survived and we learned a lot. And then in 1996, the third year, Bases Loaded 3, was uh, the year that uh, it all came together into this uh, video that you're looking at. The Nashville guys, a lot of them had done it a couple of times, so we had our act a little more together. Victor Wooten was very generous to agree to come down and bring his friends Steve Bailey, Oteil Burbridge, and Bill Dickens. 
Everybody rose to the occasion, and I was real happy with how the stuff turned out. I really think that that was a real turning point, and we did some more shows in 96, 97, 98, and then uh, took a little break for a while, came back in 2003 and 2004, and um, had Bob Babbitt come play with us, which was a gas. We always had great guest stars, guys who were so willing to come have fun with us and just sort of let it rip. When I think about all the friends that have done this, and two guys in particular who are no longer with us that I'd love to acknowledge, uh, Roy Husky, who played in the first two bass orchestras. Roy was a real inspiration to me, and he was a wonderful Nashville player, one of the best acoustic bass players on the planet ever. dedicated the 96 show to Roy. He was getting, he was sick at that time and we kind of knew he wasn't going to make it. But he was such a wonderful spirit and we miss him. Another guy who we love very dearly was Jackie Street. And I always used to say when Jackie was in the bass orchestra, okay, now everybody's got to remember, Jackie's playing bass. He's the bass player. We're all doing this other stuff. If you don't know where you are, listen to Jackie. He had the most beautiful feel and, and pocket, and he was just a sweet, gentle soul, and we miss him very much. Well, I'm very grateful to everybody. So many just great players, and they were always very generous with their time and energy. And I think together as a group, we showed that the bass as an instrument is infinite. Maybe the bass players are going to take over the world. I certainly haven't given up. And we're getting ready to revive the All Bass Orchestra again. And, uh, I think it's going to be really interesting to see what everybody brings back to the table as we've all gone off and done our own thing. You know, we've all, as a group, I think, taken this instrument to places that none of us would have imagined when we first picked up the instrument. And we really discovered so many ways to play the bass, which is really what the bass orchestra was about. The day the bass players took over the world. Tonight is the night. We're going to do it. Lock your door. It's all happening. Thank you all very much. My name is Dave Pomeroy. This is the Bass Orchestra.